Welcome everybody back to Friar Talk. Tonight we're going to be talking about a little bit of Padres drama that's been going on the last couple of days. Now tonight, Padres are coming off a win against the Cubs. Fernando had a fantastic game. But after yesterday's game, it felt like it was kind of a, a dark spot for the Padres team. Now they had just won 3 or 4 against the Diamondbacks, but they got shut out on Tuesday night. And after Tuesday night, there's a few things that have kind of gone down. So we are a day removed. You are coming off a victory. So it's a, it's a positive day. Fernando balled out. Best game of the season so far um, for him. Just I, I would say at least because he didn't have a home run, but he had two super clutch hits. And I feel like that matters more. Um, but overall, last couple of days, we look at it. Fernando gets chanted at for the first time about steroids, does a little dance. Now, this is this is the least of the drama, but I just thought it was interesting to bring up because it's going to happen a lot throughout the season. So Fernando does his little dance. Today comes up, gets booed a bunch, kind of embraces that, and then ends up winning the game tonight. Um, yesterday, Padres get shut out, and not counting today's game, but counting through yesterday, they have been shut out 20% of the time throughout the season. We've been talking about Juan Soto. We've been talking about Manny Machado's slumps. Um, we've been talking about kind of questioning the hitting coaches. Uh, the Padres don't have a true hitting coach. They have a bunch of assistants. Uh, Juan Soto had a couple quotes that came out a while back about him. Just it, it seemed like he was a little bit displeased with the hitting coaches. Don't want to put any words into his mouth, but it did kind of come across that way. Um, and there's just been a little bit of drama with that. Everyone's been kind of wondering, why did the Padres not employ a hitting coach? Why do they you know cycle through guys every year after every year? And their hitting kind of doesn't meet expectations throughout the regular season. So a little bit of drama there. And then to cap it off this afternoon, or I guess this morning, Ryan Weathers got sent down to AAA after you know playing really well in the majors. And his mom kind of went to Twitter and says like, hey, this makes no sense. Like This is kind of ridiculous. And we've seen with Ryan Weathers that his family in specific has been really frustrated with the way that the Padres have utilized him. Um, one, him kind of coming back and forth between a starter and reliever, going up and down through the majors. Um, and back to the minors and kind of working on different stuff. And it felt like finally, that, like right now, he had found his footing. He came in as a reliever in the MLB. The Padres are deciding to keep him as a starter. But with because of that, they're sending him down to the minors. And his family's upset about it. Obviously, he's probably as, upset about that as well. Um, and I understand what the Padres are doing. But I also understand the frustration with Ryan Weathers because I mean, let's be honest, like one of the, the biggest kind of issues with the Padres for the past decade or so, at least of our, of our time watching the Padres, is that they struggle to develop guys. And sending a guy up and down through the majors and the minors and not keeping him consistent, keeping him as a starter, sometimes moving him to a reliever, and just all this change is not a proper way to develop a guy. So I do get the frustration there, but just kind of a, a bunch of stuff that we wanted to go over. So I feel like those are kind of the three main things, but Isaac... What do you think about all these situations? Maybe we start with Ryan Weathers, and then we get into the the offense and the slumping after that. So much has happened in one month. It's kind of crazy. I mean, it's a, it's a good thing when it comes to the Padres because in the past it was like in one month not much happened, and the season was very dim even after one month. It wasn't very hopeful. Um, but right now it's a pretty hopeful season. With expectations comes a lot of, a lot of drama, a lot of doubt, a lot of hope. Um, and that's a good thing about the Padres. But when you look at the situation with Ryan Weathers, it's it's a pretty weird one because he was pitching really well. He pitched good out of the bullpen. He pitched good as a starter. Um, and, and he looked pretty darn good. His velocity was going up throughout the game. Um, but his velocity was down on what yesterday. We're recording this on Wednesday. It was down on Tuesday. So I don't know if that was the reason the Padres sent him down or they just felt like, hey, you know, we want to keep him as a starter. We want to give him starter innings. And if we keep him up here, we're not going to be able to give him that. And with the way Michael Walker and, you know, Michael Walker didn't pitch really bad tonight. There was a ball hit to Jose Azucar that, you know, should have been caught, but there was a lot of wind. It had a really high catch probability. It just wasn't caught. So maybe that would have been a five in a five inning one earned run outing or maybe a six inning one earned run outing for Michael Walker, depending on how many pitches he was at, but his stuff doesn't look great. I'm not very encouraged by his, his recent outings and Ryan Weathers might be needed out of, out of, you know, when, if Michael Walker continues to falter. So in that event, keeping Ryan Weathers as a starter, keeping him conditioned to be able to come up and start is important. So I don't think the Weathers family should take too much offense to it. Of course, in any occupation, if you get demoted or 
you know, if, if something like this happens to you, you're going to feel offended. You're going to feel as if your performance isn't good enough. But at the end of the day, I don't think that's what this is. And it's unfortunate for that family because, you know, like I said, it will feel that way. But I don't I don't think it's going to be that way. I think Brian Weathers will be up really soon um, because he's important. He's he's going to be an important part of this Padres team. And whether that be as a starter or a reliever, it, you know, whatever it is, I think he should be open to it. And I think his time to start will come eventually, um, whether it be because of bad performances from Waka or whoever else is in the rotation or we need guys in the bullpen. So um, I hope that that all gets resolved soon because I think Ryan Weathers is, has a lot of potential, a lot of hope, and I don't want to see him gone. You know, we've, he's been, we've seen him for years now. We've seen his development and I think it's finally starting to pan out. Um, but, you know, talking about the offense, it's such, it's such a weird thing. Cause the Padres, if you take out Xander Bogarts recently, they were under the Mendoza line. They were hitting like 199, um, with Xander Bogarts, they're hitting 214 and, still the lowest ranked offense in terms of batting average and batting average isn't the, the, you know, tell all sequence here, the tell all, um, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for to tell all stat. However, it doesn't help when even in, uh, stats such as runners hitting with runners in scoring position or RBIs runs, they're still pretty damn low. And you can take a positive out of this and say, well, they're still 13 and 13. They faced up to this point the third hardest schedule in all of baseball. They're 500. They didn't play a lot of games with Fernando. Uh, Joe just made his first start recently. Hughes only made three starts, and they're still 500. They're still a good ball club. There's a lot of hope, and that's why I'm saying, you know, don't feel slighted or or don't feel discouraged because they're 500 right now. Feel encouraged because they're not playing their best baseball, and they're still putting up 500 baseball. Um, but – Call me wrong, but I feel like a lot of the struggles offensively are due to the big time offensive struggles of Juan Soto and Manny Machado. Juan Soto has a 680 OPS right now. Manny Machado may be cracking 600. Um, and and we're a month into the season. And I, I told you guys, you know, if Juan Soto is not up to par by April 20th, then I'll start to panic. And I'm starting to panic because a lot of a lot of um his his career shows us that he's going to bounce back however we haven't seen that on a, in a Padres uniform a lot of that was based off him in a Nationals uniform since he's come to to the Padres he hasn't been very good he's got maybe a 700 or like a 770 OPS something like that in a Padres uniform it's a little discouraging considering you, you know we gave up a lot and we had high expectations for him um and we don't you know the thing is we don't need him to be a 300 hitter. We don't need him to do what he did in Washington. We need him to be like a good 260, 270 hitter and su supply some power, being like nine, like eight, 80 OPS, something like that. That's something we expect from Juan Soto. That's kind of not expecting enough from Juan Soto, considering what he did in Washington and the MVP year he put up and the years he put up prior to that. Um, so I do feel like a lot of the offensive struggles are on Manny Machado, Juan Soto, unfortunately. And I'm not trying to bash them or anything. I love them. They're two of my favorite players. I, I absolutely adore them as Padres. I want them in Padres uniforms. Man, he's already locked up, but I want Soto in a Padres uniform for a while. But right now, it's not looking like Soto's going to be worth the money if his one tool is not being shown right now. His one tool, his best tool is his ability to hit. He's known as the Ted Williams of baseball right now, and we're not getting that. Um and it, it's super unfortunate because Soto and Machado batting back to back, they're supposed to be the bank. They're supposed to be, you know, the, the guys that bring people in, the guys that are constantly getting on base, the guys that are putting themselves in a position for Xander Bogarts, Nelson Cruz, Jake Cronenworth to bring them in. And they're not doing that right now. Um, but, you know, other guys that are struggling, you got Hassan Kim struggling pretty, pretty, he's having a pretty rough season so far. Um, Nelson Cruz, I know he got a hit today, but he was struggling for a little while. Matt Carpenter was starting to heat up. Jake was starting to heat up. Um, Fernando, he's hitting the ball hard. He was struggling, but got he bounced back today. So, and of course, the catcher position has just been horrible. Um, Luis Camposano was hitting the ball hard, but he got hurt. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of struggles right now. You got Machado, you got Soto, you got Hassan Kim. Jay Cronenworth didn't get hot till recently. Uh, Fernando just came back. A lot of struggles right now offensively, and we're still 13 and 13, luckily. But we're going to need to see the offense pick it up soon. 
Yeah, and kind of going and looking into that, you know, you're talking about the team being 13 and 13. That's pretty good. Not to mention, like, they played a t- really tough schedule to start the season as well. So going 13 and 13 when you're playing such a tough schedule looks good, but it's the context of what the team looks like because you brought up the offense. I mean, looking through it, Bogarts has been good. Tatis has like 25 at bats. Um, Nelson Cruz, Matt Carpenter, I would say solid, maybe not super exciting, but they've had a bunch of ribbies. Um, now they are hitting five after all those guys, but like they've looked okay. They've been up and down. Carpenter's got hot recently. Nelson Cruz was hot early on. I think it's going to kind of fluctuate throughout the season, but overall decent numbers. Uh, Jay Cronenworth starting to heat up. Not like horrible numbers, but not that great. Um, Hassan Kim actually had two hits today, but are we really expecting anything crazy offensively out of him? No. If he can do a little bit better, that's cool. It's not like we're really banking on that with this lineup. And then the catcher position, that's been bad. Grisham's been better than we've wanted Grisham to be. Like he's, he's he, Grisham has exceeded expectations. So you look through the whole lineup, you're like, it's actually not that bad. It's two guys. You're right. It's, it is two guys. It's Juan Soto and it's Manny Machado. And you don't want to, I, I feel like everyone that's a Padres fan, you don't want to rip Manny Machado because of how the crazy season he's had and that we've seen him do it in a Padres uniform. But Manny is struggling right now. Seems like he has this back injury that's that's kind of lingering and bothering him. I'll be honest. I, I'm not concerned about Manny Machado. I, I think he's going to figure out. I think his pop's going to come back a little bit. The only reason that I'd be concerned if like his injury is actually affecting him and it's stopping him from driving the baseball but also I've seen him just absolutely rip balls and like get robbed or have whatever happen. Um, and also like just absolutely lacing balls foul, hitting a bunch of deep fly balls that, it, you know, on the, I forget what the account is on Twitter, but it's like, you know, it, it, with this bang or with, like whatever it is um, with this balling, I think. And uh, it's like, you know, this was a home run in half the parks, but here it's a warning track. So like, I, I think Machado is going to find himself himself. And also remember last year was kind of, I don't want to say it's an outlier year for Machado because he's so consistent, but like that was his best season. He's usually really up and down. So next month he might just go insane. And then we look at him and go, oh, Machado's actually having a pretty good season. That's not out of the realm. That's how Machado's usually in most seasons. Last year he was just completely on one all year. But the real concern is definitely going to be Juan Soto. And and maybe we shouldn't be concerned. But like you look at his spray chart, he has one opposite field single. He has one hit to the left of second base. He looked completely lost today. He went 0 for 5 and struck out three times. And it, it, the thing is, it's not looking better. And there's all these issues with the Padres. Like, oh, like, the Padres don't have good hitting coaches. Juan Soto basically said something along the lines of, like, yeah, like, we can all tell that something's wrong. We don't really know it, to, how to fix it. Like, that's not good. I think Bob Melvin had a quote that people were, like, kind of freaking out a little bit about. And honestly, it's not the worst thing to kind of be like, this is a really strange quote. But he said something like, yeah, they're going to figure it out. But it was a very, like, dismissive comment in a way. Which I get what he's saying, like, hey, they're superstars, it's gonna work out, which he's probably right. But still, when you're watching the struggle, it's like that can't be the answer, right? Like, because we're looking at Soto, and it's not like a Machado where it's like, oh, he's probably gonna, you know, find his pop and it's gonna be whatever. Soto looks lost. Soto looks completely lost. So that's kind of the issue there. Um, and I, I do think that eventually he's gonna bounce back, but I feel like everyone's kind of starting to hit the panic bu- button a little bit. And Isaac, like you said, you said like April 20th is when you'd be like concerned because we were all expecting him to start out the season super hot. He was the number one player today in, in the MVP odds for the NL. Like he was supposed to come out and just ball, like absolutely ball out. And it's been the opposite of that. So of course there's going to be a concern there. Um, and, and we're going to have to see how it plays out. But I feel like overall with this, you know, kind of the, the drama of the Padres, I feel like the last thing, Isaac, you didn't get to kind of say your piece on it, but what do you think about the, the first time of Fernando getting booed this season? I was surprised that it came from Chicago. I was surprised that it happened in Chicago. I mean, arguably their best player, most popular player ever took steroids. And uh, that was Sammy Sosa. But um, it, it wasn't a surprise that it happened. I'm surprised where it happened. And Fernando handled it with grace. And that's something he's going to do all season. That's kind of something that he admired coming into the season. Like he's not going to be very well welcomed. He's not going to be... You know, no one's going to cheer for him. No one's going to be excited uh, or people are probably going to be excited to boo him, but no one's going to be, um, I'm trying to find the word. No one's going to be nice to him um, because you know how it works in baseball. If you cheat, um, if you take steroids, you're suddenly the devil in, in the sport and it just doesn't work out for you in baseball. However, in football, like, I mean, you think of it this way, right? Fernando takes steroids. He gets dropped from Adidas. 
DeAndre Hopkins took PEDs also. He's still with Adidas. It, that, that's just the realm of the two different sports. Like in football, it's not going to be cared about as much, but in baseball, because of the historical context of it, because of how many people have taken it, because of, you know, the whole thing with the, with a rods camp and everything like that, you're a devil. And that's what happened to Fernando Tatis jr. And he's going to get some, some well receptions depending on the crowd. I mean, the younger crowd, I think we're going to, you know, embrace him and that, you know, admire him because he is one of the most electrifying players in baseball, but Obviously in Chicago wasn't the case, and I'm I'm very happy with how he handled it. He didn't say anything wrong. He he was dancing it off, and it was super fun. He's he's a super fun player, man. I mean, everyone's gonna start seeing how cool Fernando Tatis Jr. is again. He's gonna become one of the faces of baseball again. He he still is, but he's gonna be plastered all over the MLB Twitter and everything again. It's gonna be super fun to see. Um and showed off today, showed out today with with three RBIs, two of them in, in all of them in clutch situations, bringing the Padres um, to basically willing the Padres to win this game. Um, so it was, it was, it was cool, man. It's cool seeing how Fernando is going to handle it throughout the season. It's going to be tough when he goes to uh, Dodger stadium. It's going to be tough when he probably goes to Oracle park, but I think he's going to handle it. Great. It better not be tough when he goes to Oracle. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, I figure that too. Cause they're, <laughs> You know, they're their old outfielder took some steroids too, but um, dude, it's just a weird thing, man. Baseball is not a forgiving sport when it comes to steroids. No, it is, it is funny that you bring up like that, the Hopkins stuff because it's so true. Like, Hopkins gets busted with PDs and he's like, hey, anyway, man, I, I took the wrong supplements. Fernando gets busted the same thing, and the, the way that it's received is entirely different, but I mean, it does make sense at the same time, like, because steroids are literally such a big deal in baseball, also. I mean that era was just like very odd and kind of like they kind of kind of screwed up the sport a little bit in a sense. Um, but I don't know. I think Fernando's gonna kind of embrace the villain role. I saw some people being like, "Oh, for I, I think it was um, uh, what's his name? The Red Sox dude, like Jared, oh, Jared something. He's pretty big. He's like one of the MLB, huh? Jared Saltalamakia? No, oh, no, no, Jared Carabas. Jared Carabas. Yeah, he was talking like, ah, oh, like Fernando's not that guy to be like the villain role. Dude, I think Fernando loves a villain role. Like, whenever the whole thing was in 2021, was it 2021 or 20, 2020, 20, whenever it was, whenever he goes to Dodger Stadium, he embraces like that kind of, oh, I'm going to get booed. Okay, bet. I'm going to go off and have my best, all of my best games against the Dodgers because I get booed because there's this added pressure. And then he knows when he comes back to Petco, everyone loves him. So it's like, it's a very interesting thing with him. I, I think he's going to embrace it just fine, though. So. Overall, that's kind of the the roundup of the of the Padres drama. Um, but let us know what you think about the whole Ryan Weather situation. I think that's the most like, I guess, kind of like, kind of exciting stuff with this. Um, just because like it, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. You know, you don't usually see like parents like kind of like reaching out like that. But we've seen that a little bit with Weathers, and and, and honestly, I get it from his point of view. But I also get it from the Padres' point of view. So I'd, I'd love to hear what other people think about that one. Um, also, same thing with Tatis. I think Tatis is super fascinating. I feel like the struggles we've talked about him a bunch, but like we're just gonna keep lumping that one in until uh, until something changes. But I, I think that's probably gonna do it. Hopefully, the Padres are ta- able to take this Cubs series tomorrow. Um, we'll have a video out tomorrow as well, and then Friday we'll be doing a, a series recap because I, I don't, Isaac, I don't know if you saw this. No game Friday, Saturday, Sunday series against the Giants. I can't remember a time I've seen that. Isn't that like it. super weird? I love it. I mean. It is a little weird because it's super weird because we just had a day off Monday, Tuesday through Thursday series, day off, and then two game series, something like that. I love it though. And I think it's going to be a super fun series in Mexico because I think the elevation is either just as high or higher than Colorado. So it's going to be a super fun series. I mean, I swear, bro, this is a series for Manny or Soto to pop off in in Mexico because literally there's no better time. You get the, the elevation boost. Um, we'll see who's pitching there, whose ERAs will get inflated in, in those games. But, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll discuss that stuff on Friday. But I think it's going to do it for this one. So thank you all for listening, and have a great night.